This programme is brought to you by Vitality Health and Life Insurance. Oh, that's a big collar. Must have lost a great Dane. Getting active brings its own rewards. Two games, 19 rounds and 10 teams. It's all come down to this. The Super League Grand Final. After the next game, we'll know who the champions of 2019 are. Wasps, the defending champions, winners of the last two Super League finals, arrive here on the back of eight successive victories and what a performance we saw last weekend against Loughborough Lightning. The underdogs Manchester Thunder ecstatic to be part of this year's final. Their first one in three years. Great camaraderie amongst both sides. Small margins will determine this one. We are live from the Copper Box Arena. It is Wasps against Thunder. Well, both of these sides are going for a third Super League title. Wasps are going for three on the bounce for Thunder, their first one since 2014. Will the Coventry base side have a sting in their tail or will Manchester Thunder be able to pull off a hat-trick against them this season? With me to discuss all the action, Pamela Cookie and Tamsin Greenway, two ladies who have seven Super League titles each under their belts. Pam, what does it feel like as a player coming into today? How are the nerves? What's the adrenaline rush like? Oh, it's so exciting. I used to love this moment in terms of you've got the butterflies, but that's normal. It shows that you care. But you've done all that prep beforehand, ready for this game. Everything you've done through the season has prepared you for the final. And so when you come through into this amazing arena where we know we get such an incredible reception from the crowd, you're just ready to put your A game out on the court. Yeah, the noise levels in here are incredible. Tamsin, you were instrumental in leading Wasps to success in the last two seasons as former director of netball there. What's the feeling in the camp? I know you've, you've been with the girls this week. Yeah, it's certainly easier for me this year. <laughs> I was with them on Thursday. They're feeling great, you know. Um, they, they've got so many players that have experienced finals in the last few years. They've got so much experience and depth throughout the squad. A very, very happy, happy place going into final. They actually wanted Thunder as well. They wanted this to be the grand final. I think the matchup today is going to be crazy. You predicted it as well. Well, we've already had a game here at the Copper Box. It was third, fourth place playoff between Leopard Lightning and Team Bath. And Bath victorious. They finished third in the Super League table. Um, Pam, you watched this game. What did you see from Team Bath? Oh, it was so great to watch. That second half, they really came into their own. They were losing going into half time, but Serena Guthrie captain of this side really led them forward with her intercepts, with her playmaking. Um, the whole team just really pulled it out and credit to Loughborough for the performance they put out, but Bath were too strong for them on the day. And Jess Silby, who's been at the club for 20 years, um, a, emotional scenes for everybody and absolute delight for <laughs> Team Bath. Loughborough Lightning, what have you seen from them this season, Tamsin? Well, look, they've had an incredible year, haven't they? We didn't think they'd make top four, then they signed Mary Cholock, and everything changed, a six-foot-seven shooter. I think they've been brilliant. They brought through youth. Sarah Bayman has come into her own as the coach as well. So it was a brilliant game. And, you know, lots of people talk about this third, fourth playoff and whether it should happen. But, look, we were here. The atmosphere was insane. Yeah. Everybody came. It's a full house here th this afternoon. And it was so nice to see so many fans come down and support that one as well. Yeah, it's absolutely electric here in East London. Let's show you the lineup, uh, the starting lineup for Wasps first. And over to you, Tamsin. Any surprises at all? No. So this is a team we've been used to seeing in the last few weeks. Hannah Knight and Fran Williams have been outstanding. The back two there. Fran Williams really making 
keeping that goal, uh, goal defence position her own. I think for me, though, it's going to be the attack ends today in both teams. Who can break down these two key defensive units? Katie Harris and Bongi Mtomi have a tough job on their hands today. Can they get the better of the Thunder defence? OK, let's head straight to the changing room and hear from their head coach, Mel Mansfield, speaking to Gail. Well, Mel, you've been the assistant, haven't you, on finals day the last couple of years. How different has this week been? How are the emotions knowing you're the head honcho? Yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been really interesting. I've done actually six finals, so I'm looking to even up this year because I've had three losses uh, and two wins. Um, and I think, I think me and Tamsin always said that you've got to learn how to to win finals and you learn a lot from those losses so we're, we're looking forward to uh, having a great performance today and actually we've really enjoyed the week compared to semi-finals week three in a row has never been done that must be such a huge drive for you it kind of is and it isn't um i'm kind of starting at zero really because this is head coach for me season one so yes it's kind of there but we're not really worrying too much about that we just want to win today Great to hear from Mel there. Now, a key player for Wasps in 2017 and 2018 was Nat Haythornthwaite. She now applies her trade in the Southern Hemisphere and she sent a good luck message to her team from the sunshine. Over to you, Nat. Hey, just wanted to wish Wasps Netball a huge good luck in the final this weekend. Third final in your third year as a club is absolutely phenomenal. Good luck in the It must be really tough for her. Oh, she's having a terrible time. Don't go to the Sun Cop. Stay in the city. What <laughs> on earth would you want? Coventry looks like that. Every it, day. Does. Wait, it does. Every day. It's actually it's quite sunny here. It's about 14 <laughs> degrees, so we can take you back. Um, she's absolutely brilliant, and I'm sure she's waking, waiting for a phone call from Tracy Neville that England squad gets announced on the 23rd of May on Thursday. Now, um, we've had an outstanding season, so many great players, and for the last week, you've been voting to who is the player of the season. She's been a whirlwind of energy and activity on the court. She's been instrumental to her team as well, the player of the season. Over to you, Gail. Joyce, many congratulations. You are the Super League Fans Player of the Year. It's quite an accolade, isn't it? Yeah, thank you so much for putting me as uh, Sky Squad Fans of the Year. I'm very grateful. It wasn't easy, it was tough throughout. So I just want to thank you so much for this award. One more game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to go win this because we have been through a lot. Now we have to prove it that we can do it. Good luck today, Joyce. Well played this season. Thank you. The lineup for Manchester Thunder today. No changes, Pam, to the semi final last week. Yeah, no, and I think this is their, their strongest squad. We've just seen play of the season there, Jasmine Burula. She is phenomenal on the shot, on the rebound, um, always there. And her partnership with Catherine Turner at goal attack has really worked. Strong centre with Liana Neoto and Caroline Hannigan. I've loved seeing Laura Malcolm, how much she's developed. Amy Clinton was in that squad, but she said. No, it's mine. I'm playing wing defence and she's done really well. And then you've got that experience of Kerry Almond and Emma Dobie, goalkeeper, goal defence. 11 years playing together. They were on song last weekend. Let's see what they can do this week. They certainly were brilliant. Let's hear from their head coach, Karen Gregg. Well, Karen, there are those that have doubted Manchester Thunder all season, yeah. whether or not you could be here. What's your message to them today ahead of the final? I mean, we would love to have had a perfect journey, but no journey is perfect, and it, but it's been perfect for us because this is where we are today. Um, you know, there's been questions around the last couple of rounds of the regular season about us mixing up combinations, but that was all in the plan. You know, that's all part of the bigger picture, and we need to be you know, full of knowledge of what our players are capable of in pressure situations for occasions like today. Go well today. Very best of luck. Thank you. Best of luck, ladies. Well, the lights are about to go out here at the comment box, but let's just uh, embellish on what Karen said there. Uh, they, they won to Team Bass uh, by three goals in the semis. Coming into that match against Team Bass, Three sort of sub below par performances, losing out to, to Bath and to La yeah. and only just beating Storm. What do you make of their end of season? Yeah, it wasn't the perfect end, and I know you just heard Karen Gregg say she tried different combinations. Look, at that point in the season, you want to go through into the finals knowing who your lineup is and who's going to perform for you. It's great getting people on and off. 
but you know you kind of want to go through with that solid seven I think she's found that tonight and I think you'll see a different performance from the semi-finals they were a bit edgy but the semi-finals as I always say are the worst day of the year tonight they'll be relaxed they know exactly what they've got to do the job is done this is now the fun bit this is a bit where you go right screw it it's finals day just go out and put everything out on the court and you will see a much more confident Thunder side well, we can't forget that Thunder have beaten Wasps twice in the Super League this season. Karen Gregg said that counts for nothing. She's wiped the slate clean. What, what are your thoughts on what she said there? Totally agree with her. You have to come in into a final just coming to start that game. Everything that went before doesn't matter. We saw Bath overcome them after beating them twice in the regular season and then Lightning and Thunder winning that game. So it doesn't matter that it's happened before. You've just got to play what's in front of you. Does it matter as a former director of Deadpool at Wasps? Absolutely not. It's the grand final. Anything can happen on a grand final. Go out there, do your best, enjoy the whole day and the atmosphere because you never know when it's going to happen again. Exactly. Well, Wasps come into this game having won the last eight games. Their last loss was actually to Manchester Thunder yeah. by just one goal. That was in round 11, 60-59. And Wasps were leading by five goals in the final quarter, Tamsin. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to forget about that. But in terms of Wasps, you, you won the last two Super League titles. Is that an advantage? Or is there more pressure on Wasp's shoulders? I, I think you can take it on both yeah. sides and everybody will write what they want to write. The reality is there's so many players in that team that know what this day feels like, that feel like the Copper Box is their second home, whether they want it at Surrey Storm or at Wasp. There's so many players that understand what today is all about. That will matter. As for Thunder, it was 2016 since they were last in the final, 2014 since they won it. So you could almost flip that and go, they don't know. So you know what? Today will be, will be. How they start, I think, is going to be crucial for how you see this game. Who gets the better of both defences ends, which have been so solid this year, will be the winners. Yeah. Manchester Thunder against Team Bath didn't get off to a quick start in the semis last week. But in terms of that 2014 final, which you alluded to, quite a few of these girls were playing against yeah. Manchester Thunder, including yourself, yeah, when Thunder day. won it. That was a bad actual yeah. final day, yeah. We, we lost by one day. goal. Thank you very much, Helen Housby. <laughs> um, she made a name for herself that day. Oh, this is 2014. Oh, oh, please let me watch it again. <laughs> um, yeah, we were actually winning right until that last centre pass. Tracy Neville there, obviously not happy at all <laughs> with the victory. Wow. Look, and uh, yeah, look, it was it was an incredible final. And you know what? Yes, we were on the losing end that day. And so many of the players, Hannah Knights, Rachel Dunn, Katie Harris, but you heard Mel Mansfield say they'd learn how to win. Yeah. It takes moments like that, that gutting feeling to understand what today like, like means. And um, if we get a game like that today on tally, everybody, every netball fan will be happy. Absolutely fantastic. As we've seen so many games this season, the level of, of world-class sport this season is just up to notch, hasn't it, Pam? Oh, it's been phenomenal. It's been so great to see, and it's been the results that we've, the upsets that we've seen, because this year, everybody has really come and put out their best foot forward. The shooting stats have been awesome. The core play has been awesome. I've just loved watching how the whole league has really developed. Key matchups for you today, Tamsin. Keep an eye out for Emma Dovey. Her performance on Katie Harris, she absolutely nailed Sophie Drakeford-Lewis last week and that had a massive impact on the semi-final. Rachel Dunn down the other end. You know, this is Kerry, Kerry Almond's song, swan song. Can Rachel Dunn actually um, perform and get the goals in for, for Wasps? Kerry Almond, too, is retiring after this game. She's threatened it for many seasons, but made it public at the beginning of the season in January that she would be retiring. Here's the Wasps side coming on to court. Amy Flanagan, we've just seen there. How did she play against Team Bath last week? Yeah, uh, I love the lightning. Against the just that whole defensive unit. Was have the strongest defensive unit in the league. They've let in the least amount of goals, and it's been down to the work rate of Jay Clark and Amy Flanagan out the front, and then, of course, backed up by Fran Williams and Hannah Knight. First grand final start for someone like Fran Williams. There'll be nerves in that group, but also complete excitement. And Fran Williams knows that Tracy Neville will be watching this, that announcement for the World Cup on Thursday. Jake Clark, the most capped England player on the side. That experience counts for so much. Yeah, and I can't wait for that matchup. We saw it, Carolina Hamlin and Jake Clark last weekend. Check that out today. There'll be no long loss on that court. It will be battle stations at the ready. It's going to be an absolutely mid-court, dynamic, fantastic game. Well, if this doesn't get you going, then nothing will. Hold on to your seats, let's get over to commentary and join Catherine Merrill.
Thank you very much, Di. Well, we started on the 5th of January, so nearly five months later, it comes down to this. Coventry versus Manchester, Mel versus Karen, Wasp versus Thunder, the 2019 Vitality Netball Super League Grand Final. Settle in, folks, get your snacks. I know a lot of you have Super League parties all over the UK, so join us for the ride. Pamela Cookie, you've joined me for the ride as well. A good start, a fast start, as you guys have said, is vital. Indeed it is, and we see there Wasp just taking this ball now, trying to keep that composure and get the first score on the board. So familiar lineups throughout this Super League season and the semi-finals last week. Every single third of a netball court stacked with talent, good combinations of both of these sides. Wasps who travel down the M6, fans absolutely everywhere get the first score on the board, and Jay Clark with the centre pass now for Wasps. Yeah, off Contact that turnover, early start, Katie Harris just settling the side with that shot, and she gets the second one. Misses, but Touching rebound. Umpiring this final, Gary Burgess in the pink with his gold whistle, Jackie Mize on. Louise Travis on standby, 18 Super League Grand Finals between them. Is this the last time Gary Burgess takes charge of a Super League final? Contact He's threatening to retire, yes. Pamela Cookie. Yes. Really? Never. <laughs> There's Jackie. Yeah. Joyce Mavruna just coming into the back there of Hannah Knights, causing the contact call. So you'll hear the familiar Manny's sound the of the Manchester Thunder, Thunder fans. The drums are in. Oh, she came out early for that one, but clipping Masomi on this side. That is really well, booms ring around the copper box. Kerry Almond in the goalkeeper position for Manchester Thunder, retiring Contact after goal. today's match. What a shot. As we say, this boy, she comes from behind, but that left shoulder just hitting Masomi on the way around. If she'd just Contact been a little bit wider, Thunder. she would have cleared her. So, what's on the attack? Early that doors, three goals really up. Sent. High ball in. Good feeding there from Azomi. She is just so nippy around that edge of the circle and so accurate. Finding Rachel Dunn pop into the top. Rachel Dunn gets her account up and running. Four now is the lead for Wasps. Still early days there. We were talking earlier. With looking like which team can get a strong start, could potentially roll this to the end of the game. Oh, look at the battles that we have. I love it. Oh. It's hotly <laughs> contested. This means so much to both teams that they're just going to put 100% into it. So, we've alluded to it. Three losses only this Super League season for Wasps. Two of them have been to Thunder. Good pressure there from Emma Dobie. Katie Harris thought she got the contact and went off court. Oh, Hanlon busy everywhere in the centre position for Manchester Thunder. The first Irish player to compete in a Super League final that for Manchester Thunder. Multitude of sports that she plays, so fit. Vantage contact and offside wing defence. Contact under here. Manchester Thunder just struggling to get this ball into their shooters. The defensive pressure of Knights Vantage contact, wing has been attack. on it. Obstruction, wing attack. Liana Liotta, the wing attack for Thunder, will stand by, so it's in the possession of Wasps. And now the lovely feed. Jay Clark off the circle edge, but still finding Dunn in that back space. Her and Kerry Almond have had many a battle over the years. And at this time, Dunn is just picking it. So the pink pair of Jay Clark. That is instruction. Wing defense, center third. Already lots of goal, whistles. Third, yeah. Just trying to suss out the game, make sure that the players know what they can and can't do. And then hopefully we should see it reduce as it goes on. <laughs> Went over the 200 match Super League barrier this season, didn't she, Rachel Dunn? Yes. Remember the presentation? Yeah. Forever Very present. Yes. What an ambassador of the game she has been. This is better here from Manchester Thunder. Just using their time, using their bodies, drawing the contact calls, taking a little pressure off so that they can then put the shot up. Oh, 
Williams. Looking for space. Flanagan back to Williams. Nice bit of defensive work this from Manchester Thunder. Yeah. Forcing them to go back. Perry Harman, she's on it. She's reading these balls. She wants the flies to come. Almond and Dovey, of course, in the defensive position for Manchester Thunder, played in that 2012 final when they picked up their first Super League final. Northern Thunder, as it was back in 2012. It was indeed. Look at this here from her. She came out early, but she couldn't collect that ball, just got the hand to it. And that's good pressure there from Fran Williams. Her hands over pressure, really making it difficult for Catherine Turner to see what's on in front of her. They go sideways. And it's a turnover. And that's what we've seen Wasps do to many teams. Again, Kerry Alman just missing that backing up. They make teams pun they punish teams, sorry, for mistakes. But Kerry Almond gets another tip to it. But again, this ball is just falling into Wasps' hands. They're making their own luck. I just threw, threw her into that, didn't I? <laughs> commentator curse of this Super League final. But they're leading seven goals to three Wasps. Fast out the blocks, making Manchester Thunder work. Leota looking for some space. So Williams getting called there for contact. Just holding Catherine Turner as she came round on the baseline. She needs to settle her nerves. There, second time going, doesn't miss. Oh, there's that drop. <laughs> didn't, I didn't notice myself, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> the support is loud for both of these teams. Alman will stand by. Dunn will do a little step forward under the post. <laughs> yeah. yeah, trademark from Rachel Dunn, just taking a time, little step in, up and in. So Leota chases the ball. There's Rachel Dunn. That's going to be a fierce battle between those two. Good swing, using the edge of the circle. And Thunder are really confident when they've got ball in hand just to swing it and wait for it to open up. So the noise is loud for both of these Super League teams in the final. <laughs> Legs just getting tangled there. Good from Catherine Turner. Took a little breath before she took that shot, just to compose herself. A near sellout to the Copper Box. The fourth time the final has been here in this 14th Netball Super League season. Under right. seven minutes remaining. Where's the time going, Pamela? We're already eight leading five. First quarter of the final. Clark into Dunn. Yeah. Into you. Nice one, two, yeah. Look how close she got under the post. That's great experience, knowing where the defenders are, working well with their feeders on the edge of the circle. Both shooters out of the circle now. Oh, that was a tough one. Two defenders right on Mumbula. Ball still went in, though. And it's resulted in a thunder back line. So turn a back line, see Hanlon in the shot, pointing, pointing towards Leota to take it. Oh, a wonderful take by Joyce Mavula. Good strength on that ball. What a link. Look at the score here. Two people great from Fran Williams coming back off Turner onto Mavula. Clark to Umzomi, to Clark, to Umzomi. That familiar name roll call for Wasps. Making Wasps work, though, Manchester Thunder. They are indeed, and it's really difficult around this edge of the circle. You're getting little tips to it. Lauren Malcolm, we see, get that last one. Rachel done so strong under that post. Great seats there, right on the court side. Obstruction, wing attack. Ten playing six, coming up to five minutes remaining of this Bandage first quarter. Wing 
Oh, that was lucky there. Good handoff from Turner. A Hanlon ready. <laughs> Gaelic footballer, one of the many things that Carolina Hanlon does. Good hands there. Good hands. <laughs> and a good shot. Look at this here from Malcolm. She just can't take it, but Hanlon read that and was there to pick it up. Wing attack, contact. Well, Leota not happy. Contact called. Stands by, little shake of the head. Ross on the charge. Oh, a little surprise from Rachel Dunn when yeah. it came back in. But again, that Ooh, same move up. she did the first time, you know, that quick shuffle shot, and she's right under the post. Thunder will just need to stop that if they want to stop Rachel's throw. Good swing. Contact, goal defence. Turn up. Nice shot. She looks a little bit hesitant on it, but then once it leaves her hand, oh, it's so smooth. Manchester Thunder coaching bench. Karen Gregg leading the way. Jordana Ryan right on the right of the shot. Led Thunder to their last final in 2016. That two goal loss to Surrey Storm. Back in the assistant role after going back down under. Yeah. I think he loves Manchester so much, Pam. He's like, I'm coming back. Exactly. Yeah, I had this thing down at Adelaide Thunderbird. <laughs> the gold attire. <laughs> The Golden Girls, 12 Lovely playing eight. pass. What a bounce pass oh. that was from Rihanna Leota. Nice, quick, sharp. Man is Man is goal goal is Three and a half minutes of so the first 15 minutes. A long ball across to Dunn, outside of the circle again. Little Archie Bargy with Kerry Almond. Dunn rolling round the back, trying to get some space. Dunn bounces off Dovey. You went to her. <laughs> that ping pong. <laughs> That's it. Great shot there from Harris. And all that results in another Wasp goal. There's a trophy on your left, Sam May on the right. Warming up if needed. Oh, well read, but footwork from Williams. Didn't know the ball was coming and took that extra step. It's a free pass. You contact into, into her. I am looking at the contest now. Yes. Because it was footwork, even know. though it was in the circle, it's a free pass, not a shot. So Thunder hit double figures. 13 leading 10. Two and a half minutes remaining. Clark to Williams. Done out the circle again. On the far line. And Zomi being forced back to Williams. Thunder defence dropping in, putting two onto Rachel Dunn. Contact, leg, goal defence. Can't afford to leave Harris on her own. Contact, goalkeeper. Fantastic. Lovely shot. Vantage break, goal defence. So, uh, Hanlon in the centre position for Thunder. Looking to work it through now. Still four goals the difference. Under two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Great shot there. Catherine Turner just seeing one-on-one -on -one in that circle in Mbula, putting the ball in a lovely space. So that it made it so difficult for Hannah Knights to get round. One shooter on the court, shooting at 100%. That's Joyce Mbula. Turner at 87, Win done at 90. Katie Harris has pocketed five from seven at 71%. Contact center. Offside center. He's got a feeling already, Pamela Cookie, it's about taking the opportunities and scoring when you get them, because, boy, they're hard to get at the moment. <laughs> exactly that, Catherine. So difficult to get any turnover. And when Hannah Knight is on fire like that, even more difficult. A roar from the Wasp supporters coming up to one minute remaining. Looking to pop another one on the board here. Ooh, great rebound there from Rachel Dunn. Harry Ahmed is not happy with that. Set it one step back. But that's it. She came up strong for the rebound. She batted it down, but she didn't put it in. She needs to grab those rebounds with two hands so that she can get it down on Thunder. Attack. Rachel Dunn was quicker off the mark. That is breaking. What centre pass? Time for one more. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Especially when he's only taking two passes to get under the 10-foot post. Rachel Dunn's getting a little bit agitated, but she's doing the job she needs to do. It was a great centre pass there from wow. Wasp. 
Good footwork, Liana Leota, and the same again for Catherine Turner under the post. Selling the defender one way, going the other, but she can't convert. But Mvula, she's there on the rebound. Great partners to have in the circle, someone that can get those rebounds on the off chance that you do miss. The Thunder needed that for as confidence that as much as anything. The final few seconds of the that first quarter. The fans count down the clock. And after the first 15 minutes of the Super League Netball Final, the two-time champions was lead 17 goals to 12. It was as fast and as furious as we expected here at the Copper Box. And so far, it hasn't disappointed. Do not go anywhere. Getting active brings its own rewards. Ah, lifting a leg. My speciality. Active brings its own rewards. Go for the ankles. Welcome back to the Copper Box Arena. Wasps are leading 17 goals to 12 against Manchester Thunder. So lots more netball to come, of course, throughout this season. The Vitality England Roses squad announcement Thursday at 12.30 on Sky Sports News. Who has made Tracy Neville's squad? We will find out. And then, of course, the Netball World Cup starts on the 12th of July, all the way through to the 21st of July. The first match, if I remember, Northern Ireland versus Australia at 9 o'clock in the morning on the 12th of July. Dan Ryan in charge of Northern Ireland, of course. <laughs> what a start for him. So, plenty of the vitality. England Roses here today. Yeah. It's good to see them come and support, even though their team has not essentially made the third ball play or this final. They're here to watch an amazing level. Indeed, if they're not playing, they're watching. The rest of the world are watching the Commonwealth Champions, of course, after what we did last year down under. So much to look forward to in the summer. But we've got three more quarters of this Super League Grand Final to go yet. Yeah, Jackie Mizon brings the ball, pops it into the hands of Caroline O'Hanlon. Manchester Thunder centre pass, 17 leading 12. Time for Manchester Thunder to settle, to capitalise, to keep in touch. Indeed that, yep. They've had a first quarter to 
understand what's out in front of them, get a feel of the game. And then it'll be for now them in this quarter, they really need to step it up and claw back some of this lead. Phenomenal start from what 17 goals on the board. Contact goal defense. Good from Joyce Mambrula. The Malawi player pops another one in for Manchester Thunder. Yeah, she's been sat on 89% for this season. So high. An ooh from the crowd. Jay Clark passes it in. Good from Katie Harris. She follows suit. I don't think Jay Clark ever stands still. No. She'll she, go shopping in the week, she'll be in a supermarket and she'll just keep moving. She's dancing <laughs> up and down. She never stops. Such an engine. <laughs> oh, Hanlon, an engine herself in that centre position. And a great feed there. Joyce and Vula keeps her 100% record, seven from seven. So a good start for Thunder. 18 playing 14, cross court to Clark. Good, Dovey there, coming round, but Fran Williams waiting for that intercept. Good read of play. Thunder just needed to change that angle. They've gone down the sideline, needed to centre it, and then go again. Harris on the board again. Good from Leota, but she can't. She fluffs up that pass. She knows she needed that. Wipes her hand on her dress. Two Commonwealth medals, Liana Leota in that wing attack position for Thunder for New Zealand. And before you know it, in the blink of an eye, it's up the other end of the court here at the Copper Box, and Ross pop another one in. Yeah, and we see Leota's fluff that just turning. She always already knew where she wanted to be the ball and she didn't collect it first Flanagan up former storm player of course yeah fun times playing with her at that wing defense position well me not a wing defense her a wing defense <laughs> <laughs> four super league finals we've mentioned for Manchester Thunder all three previous finals have been against storm <laughs> so this it's the first time they've not played Surrey Storm in a Super Stop League final. But similar players, uh, we said at the top of the show, a few of these lost players came from Surrey Storm, so they've had experience playing against each other. Nice there, Almond. Good tip. That's what she does so well. She just niggles at you as a shooter. You just know she's always on your back. She's going to come from somewhere. There's that hassle contact again. With the leg. But Dan called for the contact call. Oh, oh good take, Leota. Williams contact is Winifred on Sanzo. one. She is trying for these that flies and she's Winifred. so close. But lovely from Leota and lovely from Catherine Turner. So 21 playing 16. Gail Davis, you're caught side with Karen Gregg. Thanks very much, Catherine. Karen, you're screaming simple. What exactly do you mean by that? We just need to stick to our game plan, you know. It's pretty clear what we want to do. We know what our strengths are, and at the minute we're just we're not quite playing to our strengths and um, we just gotta make sure we're looking after one another out there. What was the message then at the break? It was just to stick to game plan really and, and look at you know what we're doing. Joyce was coming off the hold a little bit too early in the circle and was and was dropping into Catherine's face as she was trying to sweep the front. So just to stick with her, more discipline to, to stay in there really so that we can work around her. Wasps are hard side to beat anyway. They're even harder, aren't they, when you've got to chase the game down? What do you do? How do you go about clawing back that lead though? Well, you, you know, it's a cliche, isn't it? You take one goal at a time. We've just got to make sure we chip away and we grind them down. If we keep grinding them down and taking away options from them, and hopefully those opportunities will come. And just finally, you stuck with the seven the whole time, didn't you, in the semi-final? Is your feeling that you'll do the same, let them sort of work out their mistakes and go through? You've got to, you know, trust the players that you put out on the court. You know, you've got starting seven there for a reason, but we also know we've got bench players that can do a good job as well. So 
Um, we'll see how these guys run and, and you know, we'll reassess at half time. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. So she will reassess at half time. Karen Gregg played in that 2012 final in the goal shooter position. 86% she shot that day against Storm. Somebody called Pamela Cookie and Rachel Dunn. <laughs> Do you want to know what you shot at in the 2012 final? Go on, hit me. 87%. Oh, I'll take that. Hey, Rachel was 85, just throwing it out there. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, Karen was a good shot back in her day as well. She, she was a long bomb queen. <laughs> And then to the assistant role at Manchester Thunder, of course, and now the head honcho looking to pull her side back into this one. And that starts there from Carolyn Hannigan. Ball almost passed to her, but she was in the right place at the right time. Under 10 minutes remaining then until half-time. Four goals is the lead for Wasps. A reminder, if you, if you don't need it, but they're going for three in a row, which no team has ever done since the conception of the Super League. Thunder, though, going for three titles as well. Miscommunication there. Jay Clark going left, the ball going right, and Caroline Hohanelen was there. Yeah, three Manage in a row. Five for some. I think it's the first time Thunder have been in a final not against Storm. This will be well the first time Wasps have been in a final not against Lightning. So, yeah. new final competitors for each. Contact exactly. <laughs> Goalkeeper contact. Uh, contact call. If she wasn't there. By Gary Burdish, you'd fall over if she wasn't there. <laughs> is he trying to say she's leaning on her? Just maybe a little bit. There it is. He has a way with words, doesn't he? Well, if we don't see him again in the Super League, we'll miss him. Oh, nice little bounce pass in. Smart there from Masomi. Katie Harris sitting on 64%, but when she has got the ball, she is helping. 90% on average for Thunder, 76% for Wasps. So it's the opportunities they're making this lead, this scoreline for Wasps. 30, place 22. Well, there you go. And nine turnovers for Thunder compared to Wasps six. And under the post again from Vula. Such a wonderful story. So many of their players have great backlog stories, don't they? Left her young son and her fiance to play in the Super League, Joyce Mavula. She was that desperate to make a name for herself and provide, and she's doing wonderfully well. That Super League Fans Player of the Year. She was crowned just before the first centre pass of this final. Looking to pull her side back into it. Yeah, she's had a great couple of seasons with Thunder. Really been a player to watch each year. And again, the fans have voted. And she's won it for 2019. Instruction, goal defense. Right on cue, pops another one in. Intercept here from Dovey. Look at that, well read. Tracking Rachel Dunn all the way. And then it was just one. 23 playing 22. It was five after the first 15 minutes, the goal that was the lead that Wasp had. Address that, please. Find your distance. Katie Harris being told to address her defence too close on the three foot mark. She's going to need to change that up. Great quick pass there, Leota. To draw it level. 23 apiece. Game on. They fought their way back into this Manchester Thunder. They're sticking to the plan that Karen Gregg was talking about. Wasp sense it, they have a sense of urgency off that centre pass. And Rachel Dunn make sure of it. There's the Wasp bench, Mel Mansfield. Said they had nerves in the first quarter in their semi-final, which went on to be a 20-goal win against Loughborough Lightning. It started out the blocks quickly today, did Wasp, but Manchester Thunder are finding their stride. Great control Bobby there from Leona Leota. I thought it was going to go in straight to Mvula, but she checked her pass, she gave it top of the circle to Turner, and Mvula just popped. Shooter to shooter pass. Manage break, goal attack. And Karen Gregg said after the semi-finals that Thunder will slow out the blocks. 
but then once they found their feet and got going, it was an unbelievable performance. They got going today. 25-24, five minutes remaining until half-time. Yeah. Thunder really ground out that semi-final. <laughs> Nearly there from Williams, but contact called. Thunder won the first quarter, lost the second, won the third, lost the fourth. So not a consistent game that they would have liked, but look at this here from Williams. Just too late, the ball was already in Brula's hands. <laughs> that call to the light of the Manchester Thunder bench and fans. 25 apiece. The one final game of this what has been a super, brilliant Super League season. I've been really pleased with, impressed, sorry, with Laura Malcolm, how she's come on. She moved from seven stars at the start of this season. Back to her Thunder team. Amy Carter was having a, a strong time in that wing defence position, but Malcolm has said no. Nope. As we see her there, so intense. She's also got an engine in herself. Hard on the defensive pressure and here helping on the attack. And now the score on the right of your shot is the one goal advantage for Manchester Thunder. Three and a half minutes remaining, 25 playing 26. So Hanlon on the back line. Ray played ball, she knew it, you know, you could see the pause on herself. She wipes her hand again, will be disappointed. Those are the ones you want to nail. As we said earlier, you don't get many opportunities, so you want to get in front and then you want to push. But the defensive pressure from Thunder gets that ball back again for her. Can they sink this one? Bandage off side, wind defense. Good swing round the circle. Lovely run round the front from Turner. Pulls the defensor off. Defense off, sorry, and Mvula's ready. Thank you. To give them a two-goal lead. Catherine Turner doesn't disappoint. 13 from 15. Good hands there. It was her intercept. She chased that ball down. Love it when a goal attacks on defence. Well, she re-signed for Thunder this year, didn't she? Almost quit at the end of the 2018 season. But she's had a good season. And she's playing well in this final. 25-27. Now was get a chance to attack, to pull one back. Strong from Rachel Dunn. Contact, goalkeeper. To the side and away, goalkeeper. A goal to score. And she does. Advantage break, wing attack. 17 from 19. Offside, goal attack. Couple of players down. Collision on the edge of the circle. <laughs> 26 27, 90 seconds remaining. Center, I was late. It's contact. Gary Burgess it's pulling that contact, having a little word with Jay Clark and giving a caution. Obstruction goalkeeper. Goal defence instruction, you're defending within point nine. Point nine. Explain, Pamela, for our new so, Neto fans. Just seen here that Amy oh, Flanagan getting a hand to it but landing on Leota, hence the turnover, oh, but then going back to Gary's call. Point nine, you're supposed to be a metre away from your defender, so three foot or a metre, so point nine, you're inside your metre. <laughs> Good measurements from the eyes of Gary Burgess. So specific. A little tap of the hands between the wash shooters. 27-28, right, Thunder, centre pass, 45 seconds remaining. They've turned round a five-goal deficit after the first quarter, Manchester Bad Thunder. I don't have to tell you netball fans about the psychological advantage going in at half-time in terms of the score and getting a goal. And Bula not very happy with that one. No, seeing that she got knocked after the ball had gone through the post. Can Rachel Dan keep it in? 
She does indeed. <laughs> 17 seconds left on the board. That is enough time to score another one. So the final few seconds, Wasps are going to get the chance to draw one back. To go into half-time, just one goal down, a little layoff oh, there. She should have shot that time, oh. so she missed it. This doesn't count. Katie Harris on the final bit. Pass the ball instead of going to goal. The opportunity was missed because of a tactical error by Wasp. Therefore, at half-time, Wasp 27, Manchester Thunder 29. Gail Davis, you're on court. Thanks very much, Catherine. Hannah Knights, you had just about the most perfect start you could have imagined in a final. Six up. Why were you not able to capitalise? I think just Thunder is such a strong team. We know that always going to come back at us. You know, we've had experience this season of being ahead and then just coming right back into it, and that's exactly what's happened. So we know that we literally can't give up till the last second, and that's what we'll be doing. You can draw on a bit of experience, though, can, from the last two years going into this second half. Yeah, absolutely. Like we know what we've got in the locker. We just need to be able to execute out on court and you know work around what they're doing. Go well in the second half, Emma. Come and join us quickly. Wow, what an incredible first half. <laughs> you shook off those early nerves, didn't you? Yeah, I think obviously it's a final. There's going to be some nerves. We've not been here for three years now, so. Hopefully they're completely out in that first quarter and we've started to bring it back again now. Can you quite believe you're up at half-time, bearing in mind you were six down at one point? Yeah, obviously we didn't have the best start, but like I said, I think there was quite a few nerves in camp, so now we've blown them out. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, we'll just keep pushing. And just finally, psychologically, having beaten them twice, you know you can do it second half, don't you, Emma? Yeah, I think it gives us confidence. We know we can beat them, but as we learnt last week, it's anyone's game at finals. Go well in the second Thank half. You very much. So Emma Dovey from Thunder said there were quite a few nerves out there, but they've settled and Hannah Knight said we need to execute. First half analysis after the break, Manchester Thunder leading the way 29-27. Like Getting active brings its own rewards. Ah, lifting a leg, my speciality. Getting active brings its own rewards. I thought you weren't allowed to walk with the ball.
here at the Copper Box. The Super League Grand Final, it was Wasps that got off to a flying start, but uh, the Northwest side have really got back into this game in the second quarter. After 15 minutes, it was 7-12 to the commentary based team. At the moment, Manchester Thunder, after scoring 15 in the second quarter, it's 27-29 to Thunder. Thompson, yes. what's your assessment? Well, it was crazy, wasn't it? And it's exactly how we wanted a final to be. You guys all sat there and went, we don't want this game to blow out. Um, and it didn't. So, look, what's had the better of the first quarter? And I've got to a couple of clips that explain why. So, firstly, the Wasps attack end, which um, they started to use one-twos. Just look how much space they had because Thunder were dropping off. So they're allowing them, Somi and Jay Clark, to get where they want. No pressure on Katie Harris. And this overball on Dovey was working so nicely. But, look, it was so smooth for Wasps to bring it down. And then, obviously, classic ball into Rachel Dunn. They had that time and time again, which is why they got 17 goals on the board. Defensively, so much pressure on Mvula. They were making Leota have to throw long ball. They were stopping that front cut from Turner and causing all kinds of trouble. They had it all their own way. Then they switched ends. And, uh, and it changed. And Thunder's defence impressed me in the second quarter. They've stepped up in terms of their man on and off marking. They've switched between the two. And I've just picked up here. Look at them all sitting in behind. Emma Dovey covering Harris this time. Amy Flanagan then with the mix-up from Jay Clark. But it was so clogged on that third line. Also need to note as well the difference in the umpiring styles. So down that end, um, Jackie Meisen, she's already called three attacking contacts, one for Thunder and two for Wasps. So she's she gives defenders more opportunity to contest and come through. Right. Down the other end, it's a lot more open and attacking in the circles from Gary Burgess. That makes a big difference, and you've seen the difference in styles, and Thunder have been able to come out and win a lot more ball, just like Wasp did in that first quarter as well. So note the changes now in this third and see if anything happens, but I think Thunder will now be a lot tighter on on that third line, give Wasp a lot more hassle with arms over to really stop the pressure, because they know when it gets into Rachel Dunn, they're in trouble. So what, do, what what is the message from Mel Mansfield right now, Pam? It's to go back to what they were doing in that first quarter, that short, sharp, getting in front of the defender and then waiting it for it to open up and then putting that long ball in. Katie Harris needs to keep sweeping that front so that Emma Dovey can't drop back onto um, Rachel Dunn and make it difficult for that defensive end. But it's all about the start positions now because the thing is, Thunder before were dropping off on second phase, so they were running with all the runners, which allowed someone else to come through. Now they've got a little bit tighter and stayed on with arms. All the prep you do off the ball is so important. Do you know how hard that is in a final? When you're blowing, attacking and defending, you then got to think about, I've got to get in front, I've got to cut off, I can't run to the sideline, I've got to come on to the ball, I've got to get the ball up. There's so much going on through the head and that's that grinding down relentless pressure you saw from Thunder. Likewise, they're now just doing little on twos yeah. against the Wasp defence, which is killing the Wasp circle because every time they think they've got something covered, it's another one two and yeah. bump into it. But that's what Wasp was doing in that first quarter. Yeah. So it's being patient with that ball and keeping on playing and those And you have to ones. keep switching it up. You constantly have to change. And people drift in and out of games. So one minute you're like, oh, I've got them. Then the next minute, they're world class. It's like, oh no, they've got me. And it switches and changes. Expect a real quality third quarter from both sides. Thunder will definitely go in the happier at half time. Yeah, they certainly will. Uh, Emma Dovey, she said, you know, they've just got to keep things simple. That's what Karen Gag was saying off the bench. She was really angry in that first quarter, but they pulled it back together. But as we know in Super League finals, anything can happen, Pam. What do you expect from the third quarter? I think it, it's going out there with that mentality that you have to put the work in. You can't sit up for any second. Like we were saying up in comms, every turnover counts. You have to put that to goal because you don't get many of them. So it's keeping that in your mind and making sure you're clinical with that possession. Be clinical, only two goals in it. Join us after the break for the third quarter. We'll see you then. Getting active brings its own rewards. Oh dear, won't anyone play with you?
Getting active brings its own rewards. I thought you weren't allowed to walk with the ball. Something big is happening this summer. In the greatest city. The most popular coach in the Neville family. Want some clues? 16 nations. Seven players on the team. Four quarters in a match. And so many goals. Yes. <laughs> no physical contact allowed. Some of the greatest and tallest athletes in the world. Sky Sports is the only place to see every match live on a dedicated channel. Have you guessed it yet? The Netball World Cup. And I can confirm none of those will be in Tracy Neville's side. Although Johnny Nelson had some good technique, right? It was good, it was good, good hand, good hand. Every game live on Sky when the World Cup starts. We'll find out soon if Rachel Dunn has made Tracy Neville's squad. Malawi will probably have them, Vula. All these players that are concentrating on at the moment is the next half an hour of Super League Netball, the final match of a wonderful season. And Manchester Thunder have the upper hand with a two-goal lead. Are we going to see changes, Pamela? What would you change? I wouldn't change any of it. If you're talking about the seven on court, I wouldn't change any one of them. I think they're all doing their job as they're meant to. And it's about who can grind this out now. Jackie Meisel, Gary Burgess. Continue to take charge of the final. The first one on the board in this third quarter. Clark. Oh, gets it <laughs> into the hands of Harris. That was great. Thank you, Harris. <laughs> right, so let's see now, as we talked about at the halftime, can Was just peg this through? Take the ball, make the Thunder defence drop off. They have to get three foot each time. And open up the space. Great position in there, Harris. Good front hold. And Rachel Dunn seeing her fellow shooter. Good confidence boosting goal for Katie Harris. That she was at 66%. But now she's at 68% with 11 from 16. Dunn at 89%. But the shooting stats for Thunder at the moment are telling the story. Yeah, Thunder sitting at 90%, Wasps at 80%, and that's down to, not to name names, but Katie Harris at 68%. She's going to want to lift that up. Oh, Mumbula was not happy with that. She thought she had a little bump as she took the ball. Contact, goal attack. Williams. And Zomi. Nice. Instruction. And where she has. So down the other end, this pass. And Vula goes up, takes the ball, and then footworks afterwards. Still the one goal lead. Good swing. Vantage offside. With two after half nice. time. A chance for Rachel Dunn and Wasp to level it Contact up. On the arm. And she does. Yeah, indeed. Takes her up 19 from 21. So the pyrotechnics go off every time. Somebody scores. They're quite warm as well. Contact yeah, <laughs> don't want to stand too close. <laughs> Get your arms singed. <laughs> Good and Vula. Keeps Thunder in the lead. Yeah, the third quarter, 12 minutes remaining. Probably going early doors on this Pamela Cookie, but just in case, remind us what happens after the end of four quarters of 50 minutes. If we're, if we're at a draw, oh. just saying. <laughs> If for some reason at the end it's level on scores, we go into extra time. So you have two quarters of seven minutes, and then after that, it's golden goal. You have to win by two. Just in case we need it, just throwing it out there. 
contact centre outside, yes. As it's 31 apiece, contact with just contact. over 11 minutes remaining. As you would expect in the Super League final, the two best teams of the 2019 season going head to head. Nip and tuck. This is a great, closely contested game. One and goal in it. Contact goalkeeper. Oh, Katie Harris there. Instruction. Goal defense. Getting another shot for a teammate. Rachel Dunn getting the contact call. Fluid's been taken on board by the Wasp bench. Now Mansfield keeping herself hydrated, maybe in for the Bounty long haul this afternoon. Yeah, lots of brain power going on down there. <laughs> nice from oh. Turner, lovely flick. She went to fake the shot. Eddie <laughs> Cardwell booming her team forward. Look at that no-look pass. The roar from Cardwell on the bench. She came on, of course, in the 2012 final. And Northern Thunder won. Ready if needed this afternoon. Wow. And Harris scoring on there, 13 from 18. She's getting her percentages up, 72, 72% now. That's what Wasp need. Two fi shooters firing. Dovi finally gets into the hands of Mbula. Oh, she misses that one, but she's up so quick for the rebound. Contact on the ball, goalkeeper, both out players. Fair timing. What centre pass? And Zomi always holds it right to the end of the three seconds. She's really good at that, yes, isn't she? She, she just is. waits for the defence to move off. And the space it. to open. Heavily in the semi-final she did that, and I've noticed it today in this final as well. Look from Rachel Dan, it comes off, but she does get two hands on it before Emma Dovey bats it out of court. Oh. Couple Feet. of collision again. Off ball flies down, her hands back up with Flanagan. I think she's looking for the court to be white there, a little bit slippy. Oh, Turner there trying to get in on the intercept, but obstruction called by Mvula. In the goal circle. Advantage of destruction, goal attack. And again, Bandage someone else side. down, and Misomi hits the deck. Advantage of destruction. Destruction, wind defence at the top. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, composed. To take the lead. Rachel Dunn delivers. Contact centre. It's only down again. I've not seen any movement at the moment around the court in terms of potentially drying up the couple of damp spots, the ones that Karen Lino Hanlon was talking about in particular. But of course, play goes on. Lovely footwork there from Rachel Dunn. How she just turns on a six pack to open her body out to receive that ball. Thunder quickly down the other end to pull one back. Nice. Lovely shot from Bruno. She went in with aggression to get that rebound. She knows it was a good score. Look at that, it up and straight through, and she's straight in there just in case. But that was. Added obstruction wing attack. So it was a two-goal advantage to Manchester Thunder at half-time. Now Wasps have a two-goal advantage. Leota cross court to Ohanlon. Really well. The swing was used. The goal goes in. Wow. Obstruction with goal attack. Good from Katie Harris, just using that back up. Flanagan ready on the line for her. Obstruction. 
centre. Masomi again, so composed on this ball. Oh, the connections between Masomi and Dunn, normally pinpoint. One. Yeah, really good understanding of each other's gameplay. Harris steps in, she shoots. Two Super League, well, the two player of the matches in the last two Super League finals, of course. Rachel Dunn, player of the match in the final last year. Bongi and Zomi, player of the match in 2017. Offside, Who will be the player of the match today? <laughs> <laughs> what a question that is. Let's work out who's going to win it. We'll yeah. let somebody win it first. Yeah, let's do that first. <laughs> and that was good defensive pressure there by Wasps. Right on that edge of the circle, forcing Leota falling offside. Wasps on their track. They've got this two goal lead. <laughs> Harris being that playmaker. Doesn't fancy the shot. But a great hold in the circle. Masomi finds her. And Harris gets it in. Look at this pressure from Jay Clark. She got a tip on it. Leota couldn't keep herself outside of the circle. Meant possession to Wasps. Contact, goal attack. So England's most capped ever player, Jay Clark. Pivotal as usual. In the centre position. Four World Cups under a belt already, potentially five coming up for Jay oh, Clark. Oh. But Fran Williams, talk about the right place at the right time I and reading it like a book. Such great mind capacity in this game. She's such a smart player. And she finds herself in those positions Contact. time and time again. Lovely Harris from downtown. Look at this here. Williams just coming through. Breaking wing defense. Malcolm puts her hands up, but that was fair game. Advantage obstruction centre. So 40 playing 36. A little bit of a stretch out here by the defending champions. Great take there from Vula. Obstruction. We take. There's the the another chance here. Yes. This Turner, an important goal. Next it. Yeah, needed that one. Look at the speed from Leo Turner. Advantage Great take from Mbula. Oh, advantage instruction called, but then it's a turnover. You try and let the game flow. Getting a chance here, Manchester oh, Thunder. Oh, once again, a nice pressure. The positioning by the Wasp defence. Stopping Thunder in their track. Stopping back-to-back -back goals by the Manchester side. Yeah, Thunder just throwing that one too many cross-court ball. You need to make sure that your defenders... On the back through court, she gets that two hands on it. Oh, and another throwaway goal from Thunder. Leota just telling her team, calm down. There's still time. Let's play smart. That is contact wind defense. Good from Harris, and she doesn't miss from there. Look at this ball, cross-court ball. Get Not going to work. 42-37. Two and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter. It's a wasp, not like wasp ball, wasp ball. My get is wasp oh, ball. Oh, come on, yes. says Carolina Hanlon. <laughs> Contact. I just feel Wasp has got that little bit of a Contact edge on this on game. Board. Not just in the scoreline. <laughs> People are getting feisty. Oh, she'll scrap for a ball, Dovey. Love it. Super playing in the goal defence position. Good from Harris. She takes her shooting stats up to 78%. She's had 23 shots. 
18 goals. It's a six goal advantage for Wasps at the moment. Coming up to 90 seconds remaining until the final little bit of talking from both of the head coaches ahead of the fourth and final quarter. Cross court long to O'Hanlon. Good switch there from Nice, but Vula in the back. She scores. Contact, wing defence, centre third, yeah, 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 yeah. Wing attack. Centre third, yes. See Sam May there, Tamsin Moala. You don't have to wait for her, set it. He's firm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sassy. <laughs> Less than one minute remaining then, 43-38. Again, Kerry Alman gets a hand to it, but not one of her players there to pick up the scraps. Rachel Dunn punishes them. Look at this here. She gets up with a rehearsed hand. She needs to chase and she's telling her team, where are you? Help me. Contact, goalkeeper. <laughs> yes, with her keeper. Turn up. Nice. Vantage contact, goal attack. Good depth on that pass. Vantage offside, center. Masomi again on the edge of the circle, ready for a ball. Swings it to Clark, and Dunn does what Dunn does. Her team appreciates it. The whistle's going to go after the third quarter. It was a two-goal advantage for Manchester Thunder at half-time, but now it's the two-time champions, Wasps, in the driving seat with a six-goal advantage over Manchester Thunder. Thunder have it all to do if they want to win their third title. 45-39, one quarter left. Getting active brings its own rewards. Oh dear. Won't anyone play with you? Getting active brings its own rewards. I thought you weren't allowed to walk with the ball. Welcome back to the Copper Box. It is absolutely alive here in London. 15 more minutes until we crown the 2019 Vitality Netball Super League champions. 
Will it be Wasps? Will they, will they hold on, Pamela, with the six-goal lead? Or will Karen Gregg here and her coaching team, her Manchester Thunder side, pull it back? Yeah, it looks whether the experience and the composure and the team cohesion of Wasps will see them through now they've got this six-goal lead, or whether Thunder, after coming back into this game in that second quarter to go into half-time in the lead, can they do it again in this last quarter? Well, Karen Gregg is known for struggling with her emotions. She cried after the semi-final and making the grand final here. She's Manchester Thunder through and through. Joined as a player in 2002. Been the assistant coach and now in the head coach role. Would love to take the title back up the M6 to Manchester. But what? And Mel Mansfield want to take it just a little bit not as far north. Back up to Coventry again. <laughs> yes, indeed she does. And all 14 players currently on the court. And those on the bench will be willing their respective sides. So for some of these players, it will be a first Super League title ever. For many, it will be numbers four, five, six, seven and eight. Mm -hmm. Of course, well, Rachel Dunn yes. won the first ten. title back in 2006 with Team Such Bar, shooting with friends. yourself, Pamela. So someone that's been there and done it multiple occasions. But for so many of these players, this is it now. The yes. final 15 minutes, they could get their first Super League title. Yes, indeed. And what an amazing experience and environment to be in to get your i remember that first time and just to lift Trump's that trophy at the end of the season on the floor. knowing that you've just put everything into the game it's a phenomenal feeling and one you just remember forever and it's a long season it's a hard season i, I alluded to it the 5th of january we started with the 10 matches we had that day in birmingham we know what goes in to making a super league final and now these two teams have got about 14 minutes to make it count. Yeah. And we talk about the season starting in January, but pre-season for many started back in August. Step forward. Good, Katie Harris. She's got her flow back again now. Now up to 79%. Her eye is in. 46 playing 40. Contact center. You did it first. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was their center, but you were first. Contact. Just a heavy contact coming on into the body. Contact yeah. goal defence outside. So hearing both umpires just giving outside. instruction. Jackie to Laura Malcolm saying it was a heavy contact. Contact goalkeeper. Yeah. Gary Burgett saying you did it first. Obstruction goal defence. <laughs> Hold time. Guys, I don't want to see that again. Get the ball back, both teams, OK? You know what, if he does go and we never see him in the Super League final again, he's going out the bang, isn't he, Gary Bird, you say? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> quite rightly so, if it's warranted, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good from Laura Malcolm, and she gets it, she gives herself a cut. She went hard backing up. Is this the first peg back for Thunder? Over the ball goes. Mvula not happy with where she was, but Fran Williams putting so much pressure on that That's backspace. With the goal attack, please, goal For those defense. that haven't been That's in this it. situation before, mm -hmm. Pam, that are on court, you've been there, you've done it. What's, go what's going through your mind? How do you keep people calm and relaxed, especially the, the inexperienced players at this kind of level? Yeah, you just got to keep talking to them, keep okay. making eye contact. Pausing contact center, you remind ball. them in the break, so when you're the walking back up to the line onto the center your pass, away from your body goalkeeper. just that so they keep in the moment. It. Deep breath goal. out from Catherine Turner. Look at okay, this from Laura Malcolm. Lovely work, and it comes off the hands of Jay Clark. Wing attack. See, that's good advice. When I walked into a stadium for my Olympic final yeah. athletics, my coach said to me, don't cock it up, Cat. Oh, we? <laughs> so, thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Great you one, you got one job. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Don't mess this up. And Vula under the post in the goal shooter position. Balls one back for Manchester Thunder. They bring it back to three. 46-43. First final here at the Copper Box is in 2015. I don't remember it being as lively as this. It's, it's, it's the passion, the vibe. It's those Manchester Thunder drums. That's what it is. <laughs> I think it's really lively here today. I think from whatever team you support, just watching some real quality netball. And Kerry Arvin, Rachel Dunn is not happy. She feels she was pushed. The crowd start to boo. But Kerry Arvin doing that, forcing that pressure.
And a wonderful match-up that. Rachel Dunn and Kerry Alman throughout this match with the goal shooter goalkeeper positions. And Vanza, they pull it back again. Look, Kerry Alman gets up. Rachel goes for it. She did not like that. She felt she was pushed in the back. But it did seem clean on that replay. Manage obstruction set up. And now Thunder on this roll. They've lifted from that. They've had a couple of turnovers. Down on that right hand third in that defensive end. That was Thunder's sixth goal so far this quarter. Ross has scored one. Work out the blocks with 10 minutes to go. Can Wasp just stem that block? Oh, sorry, can't speak, getting so excited. And he's offside, goal defence. Contact goalkeeper. Yep. Goal defence, leg contact, both of you. It just gets closer to the post. And Catherine Turner. Great work there, 86%, 19 from 22. Putting in the work of goal attack. A reminder when these two teams played last in the regular season, round 11. Of course, it was our second win for Thunder over Wasps. It was a one goal win in Manchester. And at the moment, Ross had a two-goal lead with That's under ten goal minutes goal remaining. Goal defense. Yeah, Rachel Dunn there, just keeping that scoreboard ticking over. Vantage goal attack construction. Take there from her, Hanelin. Oh, ouch! Oh no, that looks. I hate it when people go down like that. It looks sore, but she's get. She shakes her head Guys, a little I need bit. Someone to call. She's saying no. Time. Oh yeah, no. Time. Injury to the goal shooter. See this ball there. Good hold, but then just gets caught. And Hannah Knight just Bring falls on her leg. Bring attack, Wasps. So changes are being made. I look across. Karen Gregg changing some positions. The Velcro's being changed. Potentially into that goal shooter position. That would be an absolutely devastating blow, of course, personally for Joyce Mavula. But also for Manchester Thunder, with Mavula on 90% here and getting into that groove, as we talked about throughout this match. A good round of applause, a deserved respectful round of applause yeah. for Joyce Mavula. We hope it's not serious yeah. for the Malawi star, with the courts being wiped and cleaned, and that goal shooter position's okay, been well, changed. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing... Mumbula just walked off. Just wait for your at least she's, to get off the she's court. bearing some weight on it. But Ellie Cardwell comes onto the court to replace her at goal shooter. She's going to take this penalty. She's just got to wait for Mumbula to okay. leave the court. Gary Burgess starts playoff again. Ellie Cardwell sinks her first shot. Just as she did in the 2012 final for Northern Thunder, Cardwell comes on the court. 48-47. So a confirmation defense. of the players on court for Manchester court. Thunder. Good hands there, Lauren Malcolm on the edge of the circle. Thunder on the attack. Goal attack. See Mvula on the right Center of the third, shot there, sitting on the line. bench following the action. Can help with a. Probably a big ice Set pack up. behind those advertising board boards. Boarding boards. Keeping an eye on what's going on with coming up to seven and a half minutes remaining of the Super League final. Ball gets swung. Thunder have to go back again. This is awesome defence here from Wasps. Not given an inch. But Thunder keep possession. See, the shooters are just getting in. Oh, nearly. 
I was just about to say, Thunder Shooter just getting on top of each other. But it opens up and just drops in for Cardwell. 48-48. What a game. If you're a neutral, this would be fabulous. <laughs> if you're a Wasp or a Manchester Thunder fan here or watching us wherever you are on Sky, television or online, you'll be winning your team on over the next seven minutes. And Catherine Turner slots that one through, gives herself a tap. God, the coaches can't even watch. Oh, Mel Mansfield. Three second call. She's had success this year at the University of Hertfordshire. She's the head coach there, winning back-to-back -back titles. This is the one that Mel Mansfield and her squad want. This is the one that Karen Gregg and her squad want. Cardwell so far has come on as cool as a cucumber. Two from two. She just turns straight to the post and put that one up. Talk about taking a chance when you get it. Thunder are two goals ahead. They're the one that's had the injury, the change in the setup. But as we know, Pamela Cookie, you know what? That's the drive, that's a desire. They've had a setback, but you know what? We're going to fight this one and it's going to raise our game. Indeed, and that looks like what they're doing now. Look at that Argy Bargy going on there. Everyone holding their space. But yeah, Mbuna went down, the team would lift. Can they do it for her? They need this okay. one, she scores it. The clock's going to hit five minutes to go. 49-51. Thunder in the position to put another one on the board. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that was right <laughs> on the third second. Luckily, Cardwell was ready for that ball. For you guys it's really loud in here it's obstruction against the center backwards let's set it take a breath vanish vanish contact goal attack it's high contact to done outside, outside of the circle trying to get it into yes. the hands of her teammates good pop under the post from her the net the net needs to be give it a shake rach there we go <laughs> Put the shake in something and you get the net back. Yeah, that's why she missed. <laughs> Great work there from Dunn. Vantage break, goal attack. Tight there on that centre pass. Defence from Wasp seems to have stepped up. They just peg it back. Top. Goes the clock. Manchester Thunder on the shooting D into the hands of Cardwell. D doesn't miss. She's sitting on 100%. Okay. Listen, that's the last time I'm going to tell both Aaron sides. Greg. Wing attack, that's enough. <laughs> Looking up at the big screen. Two big screens either end of the Copper Box Arena with the score, with the clock. Good from Rachel Dunn, getting the backspace. Again, they're going over. Quick hands from Clark. Swings again. Again, the pressure, defensive pressure. We've seen this all game from both teams, really forcing the attackers to work hard for every little inch. 
it's the high counts, the number of passes needed to even get a shot. The defence of Thunder, Rachel Dunn, was straight on the rebound, way offload, and then back on court to get that pass. I think that fan in the crowd sums up everybody watching the Super League final. She's got her head in her hands. Two minutes 20, 51-53. Damn, yeah. Cardwell has come on strong. Rachel Dunn can't keep hold of it. Thunderball. Bandage contact. Contact wind defence outside. Just one minute, 50 seconds left. Three goals up for Thunder. Man, Williams, where does she come from? But contact called. Right at the top of the circle, goal attack. Yeah. Finally the pressure, side. so, so intense. Cardwell again. And she scores again. Seven from seven. Eight from eight, sorry, now. She's come on. Thunderball. Hardwell rose through the ranks at Manchester Thunder. She's come on and made a huge difference and brought on for the injury of Joyce and Vula. Wow, wow, wow. She knows it. 56 seconds to go. This will be. Time's hell. It's in the centre part. Look at the Thunder bench. Look at them. The Time white shirt of Dan Ryan. I'm trying to get the ball back. Okay, They're poised. The they circle. know it. Everyone they know there's back. not enough time left for Wasps to come back on this. It's a Wasps centre pass. It's a five-goal lead for Manchester Thunder on the verge of their third Super League title. Good from Rachel Dunn, Settler. But it's a Thunder centre pass with 40 seconds to go. We need to keep possession, play this round, that but still a attack the goal, because if you start going backwards and there's an intercept... That is wing defence, that is contact wing defence. But when the circle opens up like that, Catherine Turner caps Ellie Cardwell. Karen Gregg can now smile. The countdown is going to come. Manchester Thunder won the title in 2012, won the title in 2014, and in a few seconds' time, they're going to pick up their third Super League title. Karen Gregg won it as a player, and now in 2019, has won it as a coach. Oh, can't quite think that very last ball, but wow, wow, wow. Manchester Thunder, they've done it. They are 2019 Vitality Netball Super League champions. Look what it means for them. Manchester Thunder take their third ever Super League title. It was the exciting match that we expected. But Karen Gregg, her coaching star, but her Manchester Thunder team are the Vitality Netball Super League champions. They've done it. They've stepped off to the Super League final and lift the grand final trophy. Yeah, they do indeed. They played with composure in that last quarter. They made use of that defensive pressure and those turnovers. They brought that ball down the court clinically and they slotted it off at the end. Awesome shooting stats. 89% as a team. Phenomenal. Gail Davis, you're in the thick of it. Thanks very much, Catherine. Well, my goodness, there were tears after the semi-final. Where are the tears now, Karen? I'm almost disappointed with what, what you achieved today. Oh, there was a tear. Can you not see the line in my makeup? <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. I mean, what a game of netball. It was worthy of any final in any competition. And credit to Wasps, you know, it was an awesome game and they really brought it to us. And I'm just really proud of my team. The tension was almost unbearable. Neither of the coaches could even look. How did your team manage to come back from six goals down twice to win it? You know, Harden, North Grit, Northern Grit, and 
you know, I said to the girls at the start of that fourth quarter, how much do you want this? You know, how much do you want it? And they said, we want it. So well, only you can do this now. And, you know, they did an awesome job. You know, great to see Joe's Joyce go off in just she had an awesome game. But credit to Ellie, you know, we've been working with Ellie all season and she came on and filled those shoes really well. A word on Ellie, because to come on at such a crucial point in the final, she had absolute nerves of steel, 100%. It's an incredible substitute performance and probably one that you weren't necessarily going to make. No, I mean, she, she did a great job and people have questioned over the last couple of rounds, you know, why we've been playing around with the shooting circle, but that's why. Sum it up then, as a player, you won it. What does it mean as, as a coach? And it's been a long time since Manchester Thunder have lifted silverware like that. You know, it means everything, you know, we've been working so hard all year for this and won it as a player, I've won it as assistant coach and now I've won it as a head coach, so... I'm really proud, but I couldn't do that without my team, you know, without Gabs and without Dan and my management and, you know, all our partners that work in, you know, work with us day in, day out. You know, it's a real team effort. Congratulations. Very, very well played today. Karen, go and celebrate. Well, Karen Gregg, understandably delighted. It's a double for Manchester today. Man City beat Watford 6-0 in the FA Cup final. But this is what it means to Karen Gregg. That's what it means to Manchester Thunder. An absolutely delighted bench for everybody involved. She's an emotional lady, but deservedly so today. Oh, definitely. And she said there about why she made the different changes throughout the season and played those different combinations to prepare herself for a time like this. And it's worked. Ellie Cardwell coming on in that last few minutes really did the job for them. And, and after such a long season, to come away at the end with a, a win, like, of course they're ecstatic, of course they're all so happy, of course there's tears for some, and such excitement. Uh, Karen Gregg spoke about it being a, a massive rebuild for the last three years for Manchester Thunder with the changes. Delighted for Caroline O'Hanlon, she'll fly back to Ireland with a bounce in her step, as will all the players travel back to wherever they're going. And this is a memory, as you say, Pamela Cookie, who's won the Super League many times, that you never forget. Oh, you never do. You, you, you like, literally remember the feeling and the moment. And the main thing is, it's a team. You win as a team, you lose a team. Today, they've won as a team. All those seven eight players that took the court, all those on the bench, all the coaching staff, Everybody contributes to this win, and that's what you call it your netball family because you do, you live and die for this group of people. Well, Manchester Thunder are the 2019 Super League champions. Credit to Wasps as well, Mal Mansfield and her team. What a super season they've given us. In fact, all 10 teams in the Super League this year have been absolutely brilliant. But we do have to reward our player of the match, Gail Davis. Thanks very much, Catherine. Emma Dover, you are our player of the match. Captain, fantastic. How did your team come back from six down twice? I think we're known for really digging in, and I think being down just motivates us even more. And obviously, as we've shown twice in that game, we can come back from any goal margin. What did Karen say to you? How did you go out and effectively have to win that game almost three times? We just said the team that wants it more is going to win this game, and we showed in that last quarter how much we wanted it. Words on Ellie Cardwell. She probably wasn't, wouldn't have come on if poor old Joyce hadn't been injured, but my goodness. She has got ice-cold veins running through her, hasn't she? Yeah, it's not the first time she's come on in a final and won it for us. <laughs> but obviously, we've got strength in depth on our bench and she has been playing throughout the season, so it just shows that rotating throughout the season can, can help become finals. We know how tough what shooting circle are to play against, but you kept them quiet at times today. You and your old mate, Kerry Armin. Can you quite believe that you're not going to play alongside her again for Thunder? I know. 11 years on, and obviously we've been working together all of that time. It's going to be so different without her, but obviously we've gone and done it for her, so she couldn't ask for a better end to it. What a way for her to go out. Many, many congratulations, Emma. You are our Vitality Thank player you. in that. Well done. Many, Thank many you. congratulations. Thank you. Oh, understandably delighted, Emma Dovey. One with Northern Thunder in 2012, now victorious with her team, Manchester Thunder in 2019. Nice words, good words. And there she is with, about Kerry Almond on the left, Pamela Cooking. Yes. Wow, what a career she's had. She has indeed, and as she said, this is her last season. And that partnership with Emma Dovey has been phenomenal. They had such a great game last week together. Emma Dovey, 
outstanding and how she ground out that win. And today again, as captain, she led from behind. They put the work in in that defensive end. And as we see there, Ellie Cardwell and Kerry Arman chatting as they're walking off. A great team performance. So well done, Manchester Thunder, from the commentary box here, me and Pamela Cookie. But Di, well, talk us through that one. It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> We will try to, we're still catching our breaths as we look at Ellie Cardwell, who made such an impression putting on. Yes. And here with Tamsin, deserved winners. Yeah, they were across the 60 minutes. And talking about strength and depth, you know, we said how important that was at the start of the season, which is why I backed these two for the final. The very fact that Mvula went down with about six minutes to go, they could replace it with Ellie Cardwell. It was incredible to come on in that pressure, took that first shot from a penalty and saw out the victory. She but was... was cool as a cucumber. Of course, but that's why experience counts for everything in this situation. That's not a young shooter, that's an England international that just stepped up. player, possibly. Maybe, that team's going to be there and uh, uh, announced this week, and Tracy Neville will look at impact players that can come on and make, make a difference. But it was, um, here we go, we're going to see some of Mavula and Turner. It was the difference in the end. We're going to see Mavula go down there. Yeah, Hannah Knight's just landing on her leg with her knee, and you saw her clinch it straight away. Leota looked concerned instantly. But look, Carl well, comes on, cool as you like, and went, you know what, I'm going to see out this final. And how incredible for her to have that opportunity, because, you know, she's sitting there going, I want to be on the court, and she stood up to that. She certainly did. What did you see from the different ends? Well, there's a couple of things. The defensive, the, what the defence were able to do at both ends was, was completely different. And you saw a six-goal swing both times when um, Wass moved down um, down to the opposite end and it was all down to Thunder's pressure. They came out, they challenged more, they stopped the cuts, they made Rachel Dunn come out the circle more but then didn't allow her to get back into position. To position. That last quarter was interesting when Wass needed a moment of magic. Down the other end you had Leota doing it for Thunder who could just release it to Mvula. You didn't have that from Wass. They have penalties where they look panicked going into the attack end. They had penalties on the edge of the circle where they chose to swing it and not look forward. It was very frustrating to watch from an attacking point of view, but it was all down to the work rate and the pressure that Thunder put on. The whole time through that second half, you were saying, screaming, go forward to Wasps. <laughs> they were, it, there were quite a few back passes. You have to attack the game, OK? And when you're being man-marked and you've got arms over, it's really difficult to think that there's something on. You feel under pressure, and every time they looked away, someone popped, and that's the trust and the belief that you can actually go forward and go and, and attack the game. It's difficult when you're under that pressure. And there were key moments in that fourth quarter where Thunder made Wasps believe they couldn't attack looked away and that caused so many things. Gun exit in the circle, Harris then out of sorts, no um, first phase, second phase on the centre pass and they absolutely nailed that final. Four. Pam, you made it. <laughs> it's quite a long way from commentary, right. isn't it? It's it's as well. <laughs> yeah, your, your assessment, she has got heels like, your assessment of the game. Oh, I thought it was really strong from Thunder in terms of how they turned it round. They came out after the break, went down again, but then in that third quarter to get back from six, as Tamsin was saying, it was that defensive pressure that built throughout the game and we're able to then capitalise it in those last few minutes. Uh, presentation taking place at the moment. Team Bath finishing third after that playoff match against Loughborough Lightning, which happened just before the final. And Team Bath finishing third in the Super League overall after finishing third in going into the semis. And as a former Team Bath players, what have you seen from your former side times in this season? Uh, look, they um, have big, big names there. Ebony Osoa Brown, Serena Guthrie coming into the mix. I think they've grown as the season's gone on, especially as they got used to that rotating circle and how they fed Kim Kamein. Watching that fourth quarter today, if they had done that through the season, <laughs> we'd have seen them in the final. Yeah, exactly. uh, because they've really learned how to open up. I think Sophie Drakeford-Lewis has improved immensely again for Team Bath and one for England for the future. So lots to take away from for Bath and they'll be happy that they went with a bronze medal. Yeah. I just bumped into Serena Guthrie. She was all smiles. She was yeah. absolutely delighted that they, they won today. She said at the start, oh, I start to play in the last quarter. I was like, no, you didn't. Well, you know, so. you are going to play third fourth player, but at least you want to win. You could be made to train <laughs> an extra week. And runners-up this season, defending champions, there's... 
Fran Williams, you've spoken so much about Thompson uh, over the last few weeks. Well, actually, if it had been at the end of the third quarter, if you finished the game, I would have given play of the match to Fran Williams. She came out with some crucial intercepts, but um, it wasn't to be for Wasps today. They've had some great moments. They thoroughly deserve to be in the final, but unfortunately for them, they lacked that magic in, in those, well, second and that fourth quarter. They weren't able to play it through, and Thunder completely worked out their attack end. We said that whoever got the better of the attack ends was going to come out with the win, and and uh, Thunder did that to them. If we think about the story of Wasps, Pam, they came into the Super League two years, this is their third season, three years ago, excuse me, as a brand new franchise, part of the rugby setup, under the guidance of Thompson. They won two Super League titles, and this year they're runners up. Just tell us how impressive that is. It's so impressive, and it just shows longevity, because yes, they came over to, um, three years ago into the Wasps setup, but they also started with T in Storm as well. So the longevity of those wins and then bringing that into the Wasp setup, it's phenomenal. And some of those players have just really stepped up over the years. And, and today, it's not that season. No, they, it was a great final. They're in a final again. You'd rather be in it and not and not, we are not at all. Wasps yes. the whole way. Yeah. Three fantastic seasons. And the winners of the 2019 Super League. Manchester Thunder. It's been a Manchester double today after Man City uh, beat Watford in the FA Cup 6 0. They're happy in the Northwest tonight. Yeah. Well, wow, that's six where we're nil. going to party tonight. They're Manchester, yeah. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Kobe Alman said the party bus going back to Manchester tonight is going to be on fire. <laughs> This is their third Super League title. They made the final in 2016, losing out to you guys, Surrey Storm. Won the title in 2012 and 2014 under Tracy Neville. This is this is massive for the side. Yeah, they've seen this is a long time coming. The last couple of seasons they've been frustrated. They've talked about a rebuild. They talked about becoming champions again in three years. They've done that. They built a squad that was good enough to do that. We saw because they had the changes and the experience they had. Partnerships like Dobie there, player of the match with Kerry Armand, were outstanding to get. You know, they're not in an easy circle. They're playing up against Rachel Dunn and they turned so much ball over for their team. They should be thoroughly proud of themselves, the journey that they've had and how they came out and see, saw that game out today. And Laura Malcolm as well, I think, slotting yeah. into that. She's a thunder through and through right from her youth. So going back into that setup, she really solidified that defensive end. And she took Wong Yim Tomi out of the game for patches of that. She did a fantastic job. There you go. Wow. What a moment. That's what you dream of, isn't it? What you put those hours in for. Why you come to training early in the morning and late at night for those moments. Letting these pictures breathe, you can hear at home the excitement here in East London at the top of box. Emma Dovey, who's been underrated this season, would you say? Well, yeah, when you look through that Thunder squad, you sort of say, oh, you know, they haven't got loads of internationals. Emma Dovey's had England call up, so is Kerry Armand, so is Laura Malcolm, so is Ellie Cardwell. And, you know, they've got quality players in there, and it takes those experienced Super League players to get you through into a final. So Emma Dovey will be quite happy that she's underrated because every season she comes out and smashes it. <laughs> And now she has a cup to go and take home. And the lady next to her on the right, uh, Catherine Turner, yeah. her offloads oh. in the circle. Incredibly she impressive. was beautiful tonight. A goal wow. attack to goal attack. I was loving watching her because it wasn't just her court play, it was her shooting as well. She was on point. Yeah. Karen, I mean, this is huge for Karen. She was relieved to get into the final after the semi last weekend. They've worked so hard together. They seem like an really impressive unit with Dan Ryan along, who's uh, the head coach of Northern Ireland. He's got a lot of duties on his hand. But what kind of symbiotic relationship is going on there? Yeah, well, it's a great relationship. I think in 2016, when they lost out in the grand final, Dan Ryan was head coach and Karen Gregg was assistant. So it's kind of switched around. But I think the beauty of that means they can work so well together. You know, to have that power shift and not be fussed about it. Um, they both know their strengths. So Greggy. Oh, here you go, you're going to see some of the, the best scenes. Yes. <laughs> on the bench, just what jumping. Can we get on the pitch? <laughs> just waiting for that final whistle to go. But they do work so well together because Greggy trusts Dan Ryan to do his job. He's worked on their defensive end, which is sure today allowed them to go out and get the victory. Oh. Pam, the thoughts on Ellie Cardwell today? Oh, I thought she came on with such composure. She was cool, she was calm, she was strong on the take, and she turned to the post at 100% shooting stats. She was certainly in the zone, and we just saw uh, Kerry Ullman just before then, who was very emotional. She, she's, she's retiring. Will she retire? That is the question. <laughs> who knows? Well, what a way to go out. Exactly. I think if you are going to retire, go out when you've won. Yeah. That, that sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, go out with no regrets. A 
OK, while we lap up these emotions, let's get down to Gail with one of the coaches. Thanks very much, Jai. Mel, can you begin to sum up that disappointment amongst yourself and the squad? Because you had it, didn't you? In fact, you had it twice. Yeah, did we have it, though? You know, we had a good first quarter and a good third quarter. Outstanding third quarter. You know, and you know, I then think, should I have done something different? Well, after an 18-10 quarter win, I wouldn't expect to make any changes then. And then we just rolled over in the last quarter. A couple of things went against us, and we reacted to those. And we just struggled to win any ball. And that was an 18-7 quarter. I mean, you can't win a final on that. Is that character? Is it coaching? Is it just players being nervous towards the end of the game? What do you think it is? I think it's a bit of everything. I mean, we can't take anything away from Thunder. Uh, they were really clinical in that last quarter. Um, Leota was absolutely... Well, she was a problem for us today. Um, I don't know who got player of the match, but she, she, was, she was difficult to win ball from. I don't think it's to do with character. We've got some fantastic players in that team, and we can't forget what a fantastic season we've had. This is about 60 minutes of netball, and we probably had two patches in that game where we weren't our best. And, you know, that is enough at this level to just not get you the win. Unlucky today. We know you'll be back, and back no doubt stronger next season. Yeah, of course. Of course. Unlucky, Mel. Thanks. Mel Mansfield, who's done a brilliant job this season. Well, just a couple of months ago, the England squad gets announced on May the 23rd on Thursday. The World Cup is just around the corner. Something big is happening this summer. In the greatest city. The most popular coach in the Neville family. Want some clues? 16 nations. Seven players on the team. Four quarters in a match. And so many goals, yes! <laughs> no physical contact allowed. Some of the greatest and tallest athletes in the world. Sky Sports is the only place to see every match live. On a dedicated channel. Have you guessed it yet? The Netball World Cup. It's a good job we caught those balls, wasn't it, Tamsin? And Pam. It was one take, mine was 54. So the countdown is on. It all starts July the 12th, a date for your diary in Liverpool, the third time that the UK has hosted the World Cup. 8.30 a.m. Every single match is live. The Netball World Cup on Sky Sports. Pam, how excited are you about that? I am buzzing. Um, everybody is here in our home nation, up in Liverpool, the best players in the world, all in one venue. What more could you ask for? And today, Tracy Neville, I'm sure, was watching. She picks that side on Thursday. I mean, she's got a plethora of players to choose from. It's, yeah, it's a tough job. Yeah, she has, indeed. And I think what the Super League has shown this year is how much talent there is across the league, how much talent we've got coming through. Young players have shown, experienced players have stepped up, and it's a really exciting time for, for England. It certainly is. And don't forget to watch that announcement on Sky Sports News on Thursday. Tracy Neville will make that announcement. Tamsin, Pam, thank you so much for your company since January. It's been a whirlwind. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's I'm, over. It's, well, the, the season is over, but you, have, you won't get rid of me yet because uh, the World Cup is obviously in a couple of months. So from all of us here at the Copper Box, Manchester Thunder are this year's 2019 Super League winners from the team. We'll see you soon. Good evening. Sky Sports. Feel it all. This programme is brought to you by Vitality Health and Life Insurance. Ooh, that's a big collar. Must have lost a great Dane. Getting active brings its own rewards.